we can look at the helium atom from different perspectives. We will show a model of the helium atom from the point of view of ring theory. According to the ring theory, the model of the helium atom consists of an atom's nucleus, consisting of two ring protons and two ring neutrons, and an electron shell, composed of two ring electrons, located on a common axis with both protons. To explain the structure and properties of the helium atom model according to the ring theory, we have to start with the helium atom nucleus structure model. According to the structure of the nucleus of the atom, the structure of the electron shell is derived. Why does ring theory use a ring for the proton and neutron model? In 1952, the magnetic moments of the proton and neutron were experimentally proven and very precisely measured. What does the magnetic moment tell us about elementary parts? We know from physics that the magnetic moment of a planar conductive loop with a surface area S, flowing through a constant electric current I, is equal to the product of current and surface and is oriented in the direction of the normal of the surface according to Ampere's right-hand rule. Thus, if elementary particles, a proton, a neutron and an electron, have an experimentally measured magnetic moment, then we can hypothesize that all these elementary particles have the same structure similar to a current loop, where the current is created by the movement of charge along a ring or toroid. For the proton and neutron, the ring theory works with the hypothesis that three quark particles always define a plane. If there is an exchange of energy between these particles, for example by the movement of charges in one direction, then we can also associate this process with an electric current in a closed current loop, and we can apply the known physical laws of electromagnetism to it. For the direction of current in a closed current loop, which is produced by the movement of a positive charge, the left-hand Ampere's rule applies to determine the direction of the magnetic moment vector. The magnetic moment vector of the proton is directed outward from the nucleus of the atom. Since the protons and neutrons in the nucleus are bound in the same direction of charge motion, then we see that the magnetic moment vector of the second proton is also directed outward from the nucleus of the atom, but its direction is anti-parallel to the first vector. Similarly, for neutrons, Ampere's left-hand rule applies to determining the direction of the vector. Now, however, the magnetic moment vector of the neutron is directed to the inside of the nucleus of the atom. It is the same for the second neutron, and their magnetic moment vectors are anti-parallel to each other. Because the motion of charges in both the proton and neutron have the same direction, their magnetic fields add up to create a force that holds the proton and neutron together. Due to the velocity of the charges and the small radius of the proton and neutron, this force is very large and we can call it a strong nuclear force. The electric fields of both protons repel each other and split the nucleus of the helium atom into two parts. How do these properties of the nucleus translate into the entire helium atom? The proton and electron are electrostatically attracted according to Coulomb's law and magnetically repelled according to Biot-Savart's law. The electron is located at such a distance from the proton that the balance of electromagnetic forces is ensured. I have not found any value of distances in the scientific literature for which the laws of physics do not apply. A necessary condition for the creation of a balance of forces and the formation of a bond is the congruent direction of rotation of the charges of the proton and electron on the common axis of the rings. The consequence of such an arrangement is the anti-parallel direction of the magnetic moments of the bound proton and electron and the creation of a repulsive magnetic force. The structure of the nucleus model binds both electrons, which have their magnetic moment vectors directed identically inwards of the atom towards the nucleus. This is the reason why helium cannot form diatomic molecules. No matter how you rotate the second atom to the first, the electrons that are supposed to bind will always have the opposite direction of rotation of the charges. This results in the formation of oppositely rotating magnetic fields, which inhibit and slow down the rotation of charges up to the decay of atoms. The magnetic moment vectors of the two electrons are anti-parallel and their magnetic pull repels each other in the same way as electrostatic fields. Therefore, a stable covalent bond cannot occur. You've probably noticed that ring theory doesn't use the term spin to describe the structure of an atom model. Spin is a mathematically expressed quantum property of elementary particles, the equivalent of which is unknown to classical physics. 
On the other hand, the magnetic moment of elementary particles is an experimentally verified physical property and quantity that can be used to explain the structure and behavior of elementary particles and atoms. Similar to the helium atom, in the models of neon, argon, krypton, and xenon atoms, the properties of the atoms are influenced by the structure of the nucleus. For example, the nucleus of a fluorine atom has two globules connected in such a way that the magnetic moment vectors of the protons of one globule are oriented outwards of the globule, while the magnetic moment vectors of the other globule are oriented inwards of the globule. Thanks to the oppositely oriented magnetic moment vectors of the individual globules, a fluorine atom with a nucleus modeled in this way can form diatomic molecules. The nucleus of the neon atom has both globules separated by an alpha particle in its structure of the nucleus model which creates two globules with equally oriented magnetic moments of protons with its bound states of protons and neutrons. The structure of the nucleus modeled in this way does not allow the formation of diatomic neon molecules similar to helium, argon, krypton and xenon atoms, but at the same time allows binding to other elements. In the previous section, we explained the functioning of the internal mechanisms of helium atoms. Now we can focus on the calculations of the radii of the electrons, the distance from the nucleus of the atom, and the energy of the bond. Similar to the hydrogen atom, the radius of an electron in a helium atom can be calculated from the electron terms found in the spectral line and energy tables of the National Institute of Standards and Technology. For further calculations, we can also determine the value of the electron current. The stability of an atom is given by the equilibrium of electromagnetic forces between the proton and the electron, the magnitude of the electrostatic force is determined according to Coulomb's law, and the magnitude of the magnetic force is quantified according to the bio savar law. From the equations for the equilibrium of electric and magnetic forces, we can express the relation for calculating the value of the distance between the proton and the electron on the common axis. This distance has a value of 3 times 10 to the minus 11 meters and is consistent with the experimentally measured value. The equations for the calculation of electric and magnetic energy in the x-axis are derived from the equations for the calculation of electromagnetic forces. The value of bond energy is calculated as the difference between electric energy and magnetic energy. The quantified value of 25 whole 35 electron volts corresponds to the experimentally measured value. The table shows the wavelengths of photons according to the spectra database when electrons are excited from the n level to the n plus 1 level. From these wavelengths of photons, the radii of the electrons are calculated when the electrons are excited, always one level higher. While photon lengths grow exponentially, electron radii grow linearly. If we remove one electron from the model of the helium atom, we get a model of a hydrogen type atom He. Similar to the original helium atom, the radius of the electron of the helium plus atom can be calculated from the electron terms found in the spectral line and energy tables of the National Institute of Standards and Technology. From the enumerated value, we can see that the radius of the electron is about half smaller than the original radius of the electron. For further calculations, we will also need the value of the electron current. Even in the helium plus atom model, the stability of the atom is given by the equilibrium of electromagnetic forces between the proton and the electron. The magnitude of the electrostatic force is determined according to Coulomb's law, and the magnitude of the magnetic force is quantified according to the bio savar law. From the equations for the equilibrium of electric and magnetic forces, we can express the relation for calculating the value of the distance between the proton and the electron on the common axis. This distance is 2.49 times 10 to the minus 11 meters which is less than the original model of the helium atom. The equations for the calculation of electric and magnetic energy in the x-axis are derived from the equations for the calculation of electromagnetic forces. The value of bond energy is calculated as the difference between electric energy and magnetic energy. The quantified value of 54.09 electron volts corresponds to the experimentally measured value. The table shows the wavelengths of photons according to the spectra database when electrons are excited from the n level to the n plus 1 level. From these wavelengths of photons, the radii of the electrons are calculated when the electrons are excited, always one level higher. While photon lengths grow exponentially, electron radii grow linearly. Thank you for your open mind. For more information on ring theory, see www.ringtheory.eu.